So update 1.3.0 for Throne and Liberty is arriving over the next 24 hours. They just tweeted out all the details you need to know. So today, guys, we're going to go through each and every one. How's it going, guys? My name is DPJ and I had a winner of my previous 1000 plus Lucent giveaway you can see on screen now. If this is you, hit me up on my Discord, linked in the video description. Now, do you guys want to win 1000 plus Lucent? Well, it's as simple as this. Hit that thumbs up button on this video, make sure you are subscribed and leave me a comment down below. I'll pick winners from the comments section of this video and announce them in a couple of days. So good luck everybody. Okay, so they tweeted out that update 1.3.0 is arriving very very soon indeed, October 16th at 10.30pm PT, which is around 6.30am UK time. But let's get into all the details guys. Okay, so it starts with... Throne and Liberty update 1.3.0 downtime will begin 10.30 p.m. PT, uh, which is 5.30 a.m. UTC, which is around 6.30 a.m. UK time on October 16th and last approximately six hours. Team up with other players to conquer random dungeons for a new matchmaking option. This update also includes bug fixes for localization, UI, and more to help your next adventure in Silesium, an even smoother experience. Check out the full release notes broken down by platform below. Okay, so all platforms. General, character deletion wait time is now set to 24 hours after initiating a deletion of a character. Server transfer cooldowns are now displayed on the server transfer window. Server transfer cooldown time has been increased to 30 days between transfers and the server transfer free ticket promotion has ended. Cool. Gameplay. Dynamic events. Improved rewards for all dynamic event modes to better match the effort made by players during the event. Pretty cool. Although I'm a, quite a scrub at these and the conflict ones I absolutely get murdered at but hey. Field bosses. During conflict versions of bosses, drop loot is now locked to the owner for 10 minutes after the boss is defeated. Okay, so that's cool. This allows players additional time to claim their loot after their conflict period ends. Okay, so guilds. Hunt type guild contracts, i.e. defeat various monsters, can now only be initiated once per day. If completion carries over into a new day, a new contract will become immediately available. More about guilds. When leaders leave a guild, leadership reassignment now checks in order of highest available guild rank, highest available guild contribution, longest guild membership time. Okay, so quests. The terrific trio of Carmine Forest they have corrected the map indicators for the quest area. Arena, players can no longer rejoin completed arena matches. Crafting, adjusted the crafting materials for rare blank lithograph recipes. These no longer differentiate between epic and precious enchanted ink and simply use enchanted ink as a material. Renamed precious enchanted ink. I'm actually so glad that they fixed this because what was happening here guys is to craft a rare lithograph or to create one you needed uh, the ink for if that ink was nowhere available in this game they could purchase this precious enchanted ink from the shop for those uh, ornate coins but this wasn't ink to craft those blank rare lithograph recipes so now to fix this guys you can actually do this now which is a massive massive benefit it really is imagine having a game where you couldn't actually craft those rares hopefully now all is sorted fishing improve the hook animation while fishing customization adjusted some character customization options to keep eyes safely behind eyelids <laughs> didn't know about that tutorial fix an issue where players could become blocked by lugging out during a morph portion of the tutorial Okay, so now we move on to dungeons. A new matchmaking option will allow players to join a randomized dungeon from all available options and more easily fill groups. Okay, sounds interesting. Players could only previously queue for specific dungeons. Cool. Increase the bonus HP and damage buff applied when matchmaking dungeon groups from 5 to 10%. 
interesting change, adjusted matchmaking logic to attempt to form groups of similar power progression more consistently. Party members can no longer be kicked from party during active boss encounters. That is an incredible change because I actually have a pal who was a um, kick from a boss at the very very end where they beat the boss he didn't get his loot and yeah so yeah this just eliminates that which is amazing okay so localization corrected a tooltip text error for the crossbow's quickfire damage increased skill specialization corrected a tooltip error for the staff passive ability mana amp that incorrectly switched the HP and mana values. Precious skill growth books now properly indicate whether they upgrade active or passive skills. Corrected a tooltip error for the ones corrupted magic circle, decaying tooth. Uh, the skill specialization that claimed the skill applied to multiple targets when it does not. Okay, so they've also applied latest localization updates, including the correction of several untranslated strings. Okay, so now on to UI. Guild contracts. Time to next contract now displays more reliable after completing guild contracts. Cool. Okay, so Anatoy, the morph menus. Selecting the only view favorites option no longer cuts off the bottom of the UI in some instances. Party board. Various bug fixes relate to awkward and incorrect behavior of the party board display. Party board join requests now show the character's weapon types and guild information. Manage party display various bug fixes related to the behavior of the managed party slash group member UI. Arena completing weekly missions now displays a notification, and the Arena UI will display the time until next week's mission refresh. Relocate the help button to the top right corner across multiple UI windows. Moderation warnings no longer appear on each login once acknowledged. Added details to some connectivity related error messages. Added a button to check name availability when creating or changing character names. Okay, so that's cool too. Controls. Fix some areas of the Anatolian Morph menus that could not be navigated uh, with the D-pad. Fishing will no longer be cancelled by pressing the B key while in fishing mode. Fixed a case where charged abilities could still fire after cancelling a long button press. Okay, so this is PC only here. Temporarily disabled the ability to attach file uploads in character customization or support requests while we improve the file attachment functionality. And this is the Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5. This is console only here. Added new settings for console clients to control which on streaming characters display visual effects. Uh, choose to show all, only guild, only party, or only your own VXH while in combat through the new menu under settings, gameplay, character, then select targets to show skill effects. That's pretty cool. Fixed a case where players were unable to close the QR code pop up. Improved the quality of some tutorial textures and the demon's quest. Fixed an issue that prevented quest progression. Cool. Okay, so lastly guys, is PlayStation 5 only. PlayStation only servers, party matchmaking only forms parties with other parties from PlayStation only servers. Okay, so that is cool. And there we have it guys. That is the complete patch notes in regards to update 1.3.0 for Throne and Liberty. Some great changes there, some great fixes too. I'm gonna jump back in, well, it's gonna be tomorrow now as I make this video. But yes, I cannot wait for this to land. But there we have it, guys. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.